In the United States, there are more than 1,500 state prisons and just over 100 federal lockups. That's to go with several thousand local jails and juvenile detention facilities. Together, they hold nearly 2 million people. The ostensible goal of incarceration is both punishment and rehabilitation. But the prison system always has done a much better job of the former than the latter. In our Sunday Spotlight, Harry Smith looks at a new approach in one state that aims to change that. that this mean? is for people who are at the very highest level of security. We are in a cell block in a penitentiary in Washington state with Christopher Poulos, a section called the Intensive Management Unit. It's, it's harmful. It's, it, in one word, it is harmful for, for somebody's mental health, for physical health. IMU is the opposite of normalization. Chris Poulos is more than a little familiar with incarceration. He spent almost three years in federal custody on felony drug charges. I can tell you the first time I went back into a prison, I felt kind of nauseous. I wasn't sure. It, it was an overwhelming sensation. In his late teens, Poulos was constantly skirting trouble, fueled by drugs and alcohol, an arrest provided an epiphany. When I left jail that day and left behind a lot of folks who were or just like me, but primarily black, brown, and lower income white folks, I became committed at that point that someday I would become an attorney and work to, to change the system. Remarkably, that is exactly what he's been doing, including a stint at the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy under Barack Obama. Today, Poulos works for the Washington State Department of Corrections. So really trying to create a correction system that addresses trauma rather than compounds trauma. It's a first of its kind position, the director of person-centered services, where he crisscrosses the state. I want to change the us versus them mentality. Yes. Listening. We feel like we don't have a voice. To the incarcerated. I think if there was a little bit better communication, I think it would be easier for the inmates as well as, as the staff. And to people who watch over them. I like that one-on-one. -on -one. It gets, shows them a little bit of who we are. As a former insider, he has street cred. I'm not only focused on the wellness and well-being of the incarcerated. I'm focused on the wellness and well-being of the staff. To the, uh, there's a shocking figure that the average uh, life expectancy for a correctional worker in the United States is 59 years old. Who knew? He brings those messages to legislators and has a direct line but to the I state secretary to the of the Department of Corrections. They were craving more access to employment, training. But can a more humane culture lower rates of recidivism? Or will it make prisons less dangerous? Poulos says yes. It's worked in Norway, where their mantra is... People go to court to get punished and go to prison to become better neighbors. Poulos has been there and studied the system. In fact, he's hopeful of similar progress here. The fact is, almost everyone who's incarcerated will be returning to our communities. So we have to ask ourselves, what kind of neighbors do we want to have when they come out? Good question. For Sunday Today, Harry Smith, Shelton, Washington. Harry, thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day, or click the link right here.